Welcome everyone to the Unit 2 Review over Proportions, Conversions, and Constant of Proportionality. I will be going step by step through all the questions um, to, give, to help you if you get stuck. Feel free to fast forward through the ones you understand and just work on the ones that you're struggling with. Remember, your test is this Wednesday. Question number one. Hometown Market sells three sizes of bags of dried cranberries. The big bag is 16 ounces and costs $4.32. The medium bag is 10 ounces and costs $2.60. And the small bag is 6 ounces and costs $1.80. Which bag is the best buy? So in this problem, you need to determine the unit rate for each to determine which is the actual best buy. So I have now wrote down each of the rates for each bag and I've labeled them for you to see. So we need to find the unit rate, which would mean how much would it be for one ounce? So we are finding one ounce for each of these. So I can tell on a dollar eighty divided by six, that is thirty cents. And two dollars and sixty cents divided by ten is going to be twenty six cents. And then I have $4.32 divided by 16. So this is the one that you might not know off the top of your head, so let's work it out. So 16 will go in there twice, which would give me 32. That'll leave me with 11, bring down your 2. 112 will be what is left over. So now we have to think what times would give me to give 112. So I do know that it is 7, because 7 times 6 is 42, and then 7 times 1 is 7, plus that 4 is 112, exactly. So this one is 27, whoops, 27 cents. So the best buy in this problem would be the medium bag, because it is the cheapest. Number 2, if a store sells 60 square feet, of hardwood flooring for $345, what is the unit price? So first I will write my rate, and remember, unit price means for one. So for one, that means I would need to divide by 60. So if we have 345 divided by 60. So I know that five times five would give me 300 which will leave me with 45 left over, add a decimal, bring down your zero, then I have 450. So then I think, oh, seven, because six times seven is 42, so that would be 420 since it's 60 times seven, which will leave me with 30, add a zero, bring it down, and then six will go into 300 five times, exactly with nothing left over. So my answer would be $5.75. Question three, a person who weighs 150 pounds on Earth would weigh 56 and 5 tenths pounds on Mars. Determine how much a child who weighs 60 pounds on Earth would weigh on Mars. So the first thing you should do is write proportions. So I have set up our known ratio of 150 pounds on Earth over 56 and 5 tenths pounds on Venus, and then it's going to have to be equal to 60 pounds on Earth, which is the unknown for Venus. So the first thing I notice is I cannot go straight from 150 to 60. So I'm going to simplify this problem first by dividing both of these by 5. If I divide this by 5 and this by 5, this will give me 30 pounds, and this will give me 11.5, 11.3, sorry. Now that I have this equivalent ratio, now it's easier for me to see that I could do 30 times two to get 60, so I need to do 11 and 3 tenths times two, which would give me 22 and 6 tenths. Let me rewrite that, so 22 and 6 tenths pounds on Venus. Question four, Tyler earned $96 shoveling snow for eight driveways. How much would Tyler have earned if he had shoveled 10 driveways? 
The first thing we need to do is set up the ratio we know from the problem. So I've set up the proportion $96 over eight driveways. So I cannot determine, off the top of my head, I cannot think of what eight times what would give me 10. So I'm going to simplify this into an equivalent proportion. So I'm gonna divide this by uh, four because I can go to two because then I can get from two to 10. So I would divide also the top by four. So it'd be 24. So that would say for two driveways, it would be $24. So now I'm looking for 10 driveways, which would be five. So then I would do 24 times five, which would be 120. So it would be $120 for 10 driveways. Question five, it takes Matthew about eight minutes to type a 500 word document. How many words would you expect him to type in 28 minutes? First, we need to set up our proportions. So the two proportions I have set up is 500 words in eight minutes is equivalent to a question mark to 28 minutes. So there's not a number that I can think of off the top of my head to do eight times what would give me 28. So we need to simplify our ratio of 500 words to eight minutes. Well, I know if I divide this by two, it would give me four, which I can get to 28. So that means I need to do the same thing to the top. So this would be 250 words. Then I know that four times seven is 28. So I would need to do 250 times seven, which, and if you don't know off the top of your head, you can work it out at the bottom. So 35 would give me 1,750. So this would be 1,750 words. Now we are looking at measurement conversions. Students should have a conversion sheet to be able to do these problems. So the first thing we have to think about in this problem is what do we know about kilometers? Well, we know that one kilometer is 1,000 meters. And, but I have four and 75 hundredths kilometers. So I have to think that to get from one kilometer to four and 75 hundredths, I would need to multiply by four and 75 hundredths. So I would need to do the same thing to this. So, and when you think about multiplying by a thousandths, these zeros are gonna move the decimal three places. So one, two, three. So this would actually be 4,750 meters. But now we need to go from meters to millimeters. So we know that there are a thousand millimeters in one meter. So now we have to think that I would be doing one times 4,750. So I would need to do the same thing to the bottom. So once again, think about we have three zeros. So since there is no I mean, the decimals here at the end, I would need to move it three times and we would put zeros into those spots. So your final answer would be 4,750,000 millimeters. Sorry, I did not mean to make that problem so big when I set it up. Okay, question five. There are, you have five miles and we wanna know how many feet are in five miles. Well, if you look at your reference sheet, you notice that one mile has 1,760 yards. Um, that's what the Y stands for, but we have five miles. So we would need to multiply this by five to determine this unknown. So if I do that, so we have zero, zero for 30, um, that'll be 38, and that'd be eight. So we have 8,800 yards. But then we know that there is one yard has three feet. But we are, but we have 8,800 yards. So we would need to multiply this by that 8,800. So we also need to multiply this by 8,800. Um, I'm actually going to move this over a little. Come down here and write it. So you know that you have zero, zero, eight times three 
is 24, carry our 2, make that 26, so it would be 26,400 feet. So your final answer is 26,400 feet. Next we have 128 fluid ounces is equal to how many cups? So we should know that in one cup there is 8 ounces. But we have 128 ounces. So when you're not sure what to multiply by here, we just divide to see what it's actually multiplying by. So we know 8 goes into 12 one time, it would leave us with 4. And then bring down that 8, so it would go in there 6. So this is multiplying times 16. So I would multiply this by 16. So that means I have 16 cups and 128 fluid ounces. Number 9, we are changing 10 gallons into pints. So the first thing we have to think about is that we know that 1 gallon equals 4 quarts. So now we need to figure out how many quarts 10 gallons has. Well, we should know that if we write the proportion, we can see that this is multiplying by 10. So this would need to multiply by 10. So that would be 40 quarts. But we are trying to get to pints, so we need to do another proportion. So we know that one quart is two pints. So I know that if I write my proportion, I can see that it's multiplying by 40 and multiplying by 40. So two times 40 would give me 80 pints. So our final answer is there are 80 pints in 10 gallons. Okay, section three, the constant of proportionality. The graph shows how many centimeters a bamboo plant can grow and the number of hours that it takes the plant has been growing. So remember, we talked about the constant of proportionality. Proportionality is the unit rate. It's just another word to describe the unit rate when a problem is proportional. So you just need to pick a ratio from the table, and I'm just going to pick the first one I see right here. So that would be 50 over 10, which gives me a rate of 5 per hour. So my constant of proportionality is 5. And we talked about to write our constant of proportionality in an equation, we write it as y equals kx, where k represents the proportionality. And so in this problem, it would be y equals 5x. Okay, we are still determining the constant of proportionality, this time from a table. So once again, just pull out one of the proportions from the table, or one of the ratios from the table to find the unit rate. So in this one, I'm just going to pull the first one out. So I have 375 over 3. So I'm just trying to get to 1. So I know that 3 goes in there one time, and I actually know that this would have to be 25 cents if I divided 75. So, and then I need to check and make sure if I multiplied this, would it be the same thing across? And it will. So my k, my constant, is $1.25. So my equation, y equals kx, because remember, this is our x and our y. So y equals $1.25 x would be our final answer. Okay, the next problem, the total number of feet that the climber has traveled varies directly with the number of hours she has been climbing. The constant of proportionality is 600. So the first thing you should be thinking is writing this as an equation. So I could write this as y equals 600x. And we should remember that our time is the x independent in this problem and y, the number of feet, is our dependent. So if we think about plugging these problems into the equation, I would say 600 times a half would have to be 300. If I plug 1 in to the equation, 600 times 1 would be 600. So to go, if you notice, you would be multiplying times 600 across. So to go backwards, we would need to divide by 600. So 1800 divided by 600 is 3. And then this would be 2,400, because that's times 600. But now we need to go backwards. So I need to see how many times 600 will go into 2,100. So 600 will go in there a total of three times, which is 1,800. Leaves me with 300. Add a decimal. Drop a zero. And that'll be three and a half times. Or you could think about it as 
this 1800 plus that 300 would give you the 2400. Next, you will need to graph those. You're going to have to estimate on this because this is actually counting by 125s because it's 125, 250. So you would need to think that this middle line is 250. So our first half, this would be our half right here, is going to be a little bit above that line. And then 1 is 600 is going to be a little bit above the 500. And then we're going to jump all the way to 3 is 1,800. Um, sorry, I missed that. Wow. It's hard to make points on here with the pen to get it exactly where I want it. Um, so that 3 is at 1,800. Yeah, it's still, it's going to be in that area. And then I'm going to skip three and a half and go to four. Four is at 2,400, which is going to be pretty close to up there. So, and if I had a ruler to use on here, I would draw the straight line through that. Okay, the graph shows the relationship between the area of a room in square feet and the cost of covering the floor with new tile. Determine the constant rate of proportionality. So remember, when you're looking for points to use, they need to hit on the corners. So if I'm looking at this point, it hits on the corner. So I would write that ratio as $250 to 100 square feet. So the, for remember, the constant proportionality is a unit rate, so that would be $2.50 per square feet, which would mean the constant is $2.50. Okay, we are on the last question. The distance Sophia drives is directly proportional to the length of time she drives. Complete the table and write the equation D equals RT. So in this problem, we have to look at, well, what is the constant? What is happening between six and 492? To figure out what the unit rate is. So six will go into 49 eight times. With one left over, bring the two down is 12. So that means the constant of proportionality is 82. So my equation would be the distance equals 82 miles per hour times the time. Or you could write y equals 82x. But now we need to finish up filling out the table. So if I have a distance of 164, that would be two hours. And then five times 82 would give me 410 um, kilometers. Okay, don't forget to study for the test. If you have any questions or need to go over one of the problems again, feel free to come see any of your teachers during tutorials. Have a great day and good luck on your test.